In this example, we have an explorer following directions on a map. The explorer starts walking with a speed of 0.92 meters per second at a direction of 113 degrees. She does that for 2.3 hours. She then stops and changes direction. She now heads at a direction of 220 degrees with a speed of 0.56 meters per second, and she does that for 1.2 hours. And the question is, what's her final displacement? Now the way this problem is set up, you might think that all we have to do is add the velocity vectors together. After all, that's what we did in the previous module. But notice what the question is asking for. It's asking for displacement, not velocity. So we have to first convert these velocity vectors to displacement vectors, then we can add them. So how do we turn these velocity vectors into displacement vectors? Well, we use equation 219. But before we do that, we need to see that there's a unit problem here. Notice that the speeds are given in meters per second, but the time is given in hours. That doesn't work. When we use equations, all the units have to be consistent. So the first thing we have to do is convert hours to seconds. Well, that's not too bad. Let's start with 2.3 hours. We put that over 1, and then we multiply by the conversion relationship. We know there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. Hour needs to go on the bottom so that hours cancel. So 2.3 hours is the same as 8.3 times 10 to the 3 seconds. Now let's convert the other time. 1.2 hours over 1 times 3,600 seconds over 1 hour. Once again, the hours cancel, and we're left with 4.3 times 10 to the 3 seconds. So now we have our times in seconds. Let's go ahead and put those up there. Let's replace 1.2 hours with 4.3 times 10 to the 3rd seconds, and 2.3 hours with 8.3 times 10 to the 3rd seconds. Now we're ready to use equation 2.19. We'll have to do each part of the journey separately, though, because the explorer first walks with one velocity, then turns and walks with another velocity. So on the first leg of the journey, the velocity is 0.92 meters per second at 113 degrees. So we put 0.92 meters per second in for v naught. The time is 8.3 times 10 to the third seconds. The acceleration is 0, so the second term of this equation drops out. And we find out that the distance the explorer traveled on the first leg of the journey is 7.6 times 10 to the third meters. Now this whole time, she was walking at an angle of 113 degrees. So the displacement vector is 7.6 times 10 to the 3 meters at a direction of 113 degrees. OK, so that's the explorer's displacement at the end of the first leg of the journey. If this was all she did, we'd be done. But unfortunately for us, she turns and goes at another direction, 220 degrees, with another speed, 0.56 meters per second. So now we have to calculate the resulting displacement of that leg of the journey. Well, in that leg of the journey, the velocity is 0.6 meters per second at 220 degrees. So we put that in for v naught, multiply by the time, which in this case is 4.3 times 10 to the 3 seconds. Once again, there's no acceleration, so the second term drops out. And we find that the resulting displacement of the second leg of the journey is 2.4 times 10 to the third meters at an angle of 220 degrees. OK, so now we have two displacement vectors. The first leg of the journey resulted in a displacement of 7.6 times 10 to the 3 meters at an angle of 113 degrees. Then the second leg of the journey resulted in a second displacement of 2.4 times 10 to the 3 meters at 220 degrees. What's the total displacement? Well, think about it. We have two individual displacements. If we add them, we'll get the total displacement. The problem is these are both vectors. Let's call the displacement on the first leg of the journey vector A, and the displacement on the second leg of the journey vector B. In order to add these properly, then, we have to add them as vectors. And when we add vectors, we break them each into their individual x and y components. Then we add the components, and then we use those components to determine what the final vector is. So first, we'll split vector A into its components. To get the x component, we take the magnitude, and we multiply by the cosine of the angle. To get the y component, we once again take the magnitude and multiply by the sine of the angle. Then we do the same thing for vector b. The x component is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle, and the y component is the magnitude times the sine of the angle. So now we have the x and y components for each vector. We can add them directly. The x component of the final vector, which we'll call c, is simply the sum of the two x components we already have. 
negative 3.0 times 10 to the 3 meters plus negative 1.8 times 10 to the 3 meters is negative 4.8 times 10 to the 3 meters. The y component of the final vector is simply the sum of the two y components we have. 7.0 times 10 to the 3 meters plus negative 1.5 times 10 to the 3 meters. That's 5.5 times 10 to the 3 meters. So now we have the x and y components of the final vector. The x component is negative 4.8 times 10 to the 3 meters, and the y component is 5.5 times 10 to the 3 meters. To get the magnitude of this final vector then, we take each component, square it, add them together, and take the square root. So the magnitude of the final vector is 7.3 times 10 to the 3 meters. To get the angle, we take the y component divided by the x component, and we take the inverse tangent. That gives us negative 49 degrees. Now we're not quite done because we have to figure out what to do with that angle. To do that, we figure out what quadrant the final vector is in. Well, to do that, we just look at the components. The x component is negative, the y component is positive. That means that this vector is in quadrant two of the Cartesian coordinate plane, so we have to add 180 degrees to the result of our equation for theta. So negative 49 degrees plus 180 degrees is 131 degrees. Now remember, we're adding here, so we look at decimal place. 49 goes out to the ones place. 180 is exact, so it doesn't count for significant figures. So our answer can go to the ones place, and that's why it's 131 degrees. So the final displacement vector, after this explorer does both legs of the journey, will be 7,300 meters at an angle of 131 degrees. Now this was a long problem, but notice that the real meat of the problem was simply adding vectors. We had to take the velocity vectors and change them into displacement vectors using the time, but after that, all we had to do was add the displacement vectors. So this is nothing new, it's just long and complicated.